going on YouTube fitness family? I have a very special video for you today. I'm going to give you the last, the ultimate, just the best back workout that you've ever had. And this reason for this is we're gonna hit all the different muscle groups in this training session. We're gonna hit lats, lower lats, rhomboids, terries. We're gonna go infraspinating. You probably don't even know what the f that is, but we're gonna hit it today. I'm gonna show you guys the exact exercises, how I'm doing them, why I'm doing them. So if you want the last back workout you'll probably ever need, it's gonna be absolutely sick. Stick around. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that sub button. I am banging out insane amounts of high quality content. So please hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell notification. Get alerted on all my new videos. So without further ado, let's hop into this workout. All right, first exercise, we are going to do a single arm cable low lat row. The reason I love to start with, you're probably like, Eric, why don't you start with the compound? heavy ass row. It's like, sure, you can do that. What I want to do is start to really open up the tissue. This single arm movement pattern is going to also allow me to drive that mind muscle connection, that impetus into my lats, get really good blood flow there by working one side than the other. Also, I find that like I have some imbalance in my back strength in terms of single arm pulling. So this allows me to really rectify those things. You can do this on a regular cable setup. It doesn't have to be on the pull down setup. So what I do is drop the knee down that I'm pulling with. So if I'm grabbing right hand, I'm gonna drop my right knee down. What that's gonna do is clear space for that elbow to drive in and really dig in through that lower lat. So I'm gonna drop this down. We're gonna have a slight angle here because I wanna start to reach for that first rep because we wanna really maximize that range of motion. Open up that tissue, keep it nice and long and healthy. Then on the drive, we're gonna pull the shoulder down and go from either neutral, depending on what's comfortable for you on that stretch, or pronation. So pronation would be palm facing forward, supination, think bowl of soup, palm facing up. Whenever you're trying to target lats, you really want to be mostly in that supinated position, whether it's a supinated row, supinated single arm pull, that supinated position with the hand is going to really allow for a lot more basically scapular retraction and engagement through that lower lat. If we go palm up, it's usually gonna hit more upper back through your terries, through your traps. So what we wanna do is turn that palm up and really dig underneath. Another big form cue is pull that shoulder down and back. If you shrug over the top of it like this, you're gonna get all bicep and you're gonna use all that leverage. You're gonna take the impetus out of your back. So make sure you keep that body nice and upright, arch the back, pull the shoulder down and in, and really engage that lower lap. So big stretch. Pull down in, really engage that lower lat, and then milk that negative. Kind of see how on that way up, I'm keeping the engagement in the lat. Instead of just letting it drop, I'm squeezing, engaging, and going slow enough, almost leaning out to milk that negative through the lat. Big open stretch, lean forward, drive down and back, squeeze. And this is absolutely gonna annihilate your back guys so really start light on these and then work your weight up as you can continue to maintain that mind muscle connection if you feel it mostly in your forearms or in your bicep or in your delts it means you're not really targeting the back specifically i would just get a few extra failure reps here and so i already have a tremendous amount of blood flow in that right lat it allows me to really open up too i feel really like stretched out elongated after that first set. And that allows me not to spend as much time on mobility work. Everybody is so tight wound up because they work in a shortened, super hard range of motion, which is okay, you're still gonna build muscle like that. But what you wanna do is lengthen that fascia as you train it, you're gonna get more motor recruitment, you're gonna keep that tissue longer and healthier. So that is your first exercise. I'm gonna hit three to four sets each arm. 12 to 16 reps. All right, exercise two, we got the lats now fully firing a lot of blood flow. So now we're gonna be hitting more of like a mid-back exercise. Gonna hit lats, also gonna hit kind of through that lower mid-back as well, infra, infra spinatus. So that's where it kind of ties into that lower back. If you don't have, I like to do this variant because a lot of people don't have like a chest supported row. You can do that as well. But this one is a cable chest supported row where we're gonna be using the rope um, attaching you guys can use handles as well i prefer the rope because you get more range of motion you can pull really far out at the top of the rep so what i'm going to do is use my straps if you guys are wondering i use cobra grips uh, you can get these on amazon i'm not sponsored but i've literally been using these for the last like seven years and if you're worried about your back oh my forearms are gonna get small like 
I have like some of the like fucking nastiest huge farms of anybody I know. So I've been using Cobras for like eight years. The reason is like, if you're doing time under tension for back, slow negatives, it's absolutely impossible for your forearms and grip strength to keep up with such a large muscle group like your back, especially if you're gonna add time under tension, slow reps. I'm gonna put a good kind of intermediate weight on here. I'm gonna walk it back, plant one forearm on the bench, come around, and I wanna have kind of my upper chest right above basically where my sternum is on the bench. I'm gonna wrap over, feel a big stretch, and then I'm gonna dig in, opening up the chest, big stretch, turning the palms down, driving and squeezing, and I want you to really feel that contraction through the mid back, pull in, squeeze for about a one count, and then slow on the out. The eccentric is really important on these, so dig, squeeze for about a half to one count, Slow on it, stretch over the top of the bench, and squeeze. So the biggest form cues I can give you this, go pronation at the top of the rep, where you're opening up the back, and then you wanna turn to basically neutral, and squeeze in through that lower mid back, all the way through your lower lats. And I'm gonna hit these for 10 to 15 reps. Ugh. All control here, no ego. Oof. And that will absolutely torch your mid back. It's completely isolated. Puts your back on an island, you're unable to use a ton of momentum. A lot of times when people do seated row, you see a lot of swinging. Inevitably, that momentum is gonna take away a lot from that peak contraction. And also that mind muscle connection you create with an exercise like this. So, Definitely try this one out. Start really light, really get the connection for moderating up in weight. Exercise number three, technically be kind of like three and four. What we're gonna do is superset a pronated lat pull down, a little bit more strict, really trying to dig those elbows down and in. It's gonna hit a little, still mid to lower lat on this. We're gonna lean back slightly. Well, a big mistake I see a lot of people making with pull down, it's not a mistake, it's just, you're not really probably targeting the, what, the muscle groups you're trying to is they'll just be straight up and down and they'll roll the shoulders forward by trying to stay so upright. What you wanna do is actually lean back slightly, not a lot, not swinging the weight, lean back slightly so then you can dig those elbows down and in and really squeeze. It's the reason you see a lot of bodybuilders when they hit their back double on stage, they lean back into it. The reason for that is to get as much width as possible and show as much that detail. You actually have to lean back slightly in order to really get that proper engagement recruiting, but also show that tissue off, it's the same thing. So what we're gonna do is slightly outside of that bend of that bar, we're gonna go some really good controlled reps. Eight to 12, we're gonna hop off, give itself, give ourselves about 20 seconds rest. Then we're gonna hit supinated grip, pull down. So we're gonna hit pronated, which is gonna hit more like upper lats, rhomboids. Then we're gonna go lower lats and dig in through some supinated grip like we talked about earlier switching the grip to target different things. So, show you how this looks. Palms facing in, I always use my straps as always. I wanna tuck all the way in underneath the pads. I'm gonna stretch the top, reach. I always tell people reach for every rep. Reach, dig in, slow on that eccentric. Reach, stretch, squeeze. Slow on that eccentric. Really trying to milk that negative, control it through the lats, through the rhomboids, through the cherries, right underneath that oh, armpit. Guys, if you look right here, you see about, exactly. about 75 veins right here. It's more than I have in my whole body show, it's just in a fucking <laughs> lat, so be jelly, all right? So you know, fucking proof of concept. So taking that within like three to four reps in reserve, I probably could hit three more, giving it about 20 <laughs> seconds, shaking out really good burn already. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start getting myself ready we're gonna go supinated. So we're actually gonna grab right inside where that bar bends. So now grip's gonna be facing it. We're gonna hit a little lower lats. Pretty similar on the form here ergonomically, but we're really just gonna try to dig those elbows in as much as possible. Milk that negative again. Just really try to focus those lower lats on this one. Second part I'd say you wanna take closer to that true failure point, maybe one to two reps in reserve. So. Eight to 12 on that first part, and then try to shoot for again, 
8 to 15 of that supinated grip, really trying to milk through, dig through those lower relax, it's an insane superset. All right, exercise number four, we are going to be doing, unfortunately for myself, a deficit T-bar row. The reason I like to work most of my rowing movements in a deficit, whether it be barbell, T-bar, is simply for range of motion and ergonomics. I wanna be a little bit more flat to the ground. I want my upper body to be a little bit more parallel to the floor instead of perpendicular. The more perpendicular are, we're gonna turn into like an upright row of shrug, which is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to build density here, guys. So what I wanna do is be a little lower to the floor, and I wanna always be able to stretch and reach for that rep. By adding about a foot off the floor here, maybe probably eight inches. I'm adding a lot of range of motion. You guys have had, most of you guys will have boxes at the gym, something you can put underneath you in order to do this movement. You don't have to necessarily split them. I like to split them so I have no risk of the bar hitting the, the plates or my the V grip. So you can do this if you just have a one box, it's, it's totally fine. I just split them up just for peace of mind. Um, but yeah, what you wanna do is really stretch the bottom of the rep, feel that stretch your lats, your mid back, and then dig up and really squeeze so I'm gonna shoot for 12 to 16 reps here. Really, really good. Time under tension. I could probably do a standing TBR row with like seven, eight plates, just ripping and gripping and ripping. But I'm gonna start with three plates, see how it feels. Just because that deficit makes it probably twice as hard as if you were just doing it straight. My kind of standing more upright. Leverage becomes harder. Obviously, holding that position becomes harder. So you're just gonna get so much better motor improvement and less, obviously, axial pressure on the spine from having all that load on your lower back. So, tremendous exercise. Last exercise of the workout. The perfect back workout, if I must say. So four sets of those. Deficit T-bar row got to five plates. CNS absolutely trashed. The reason I like to do my compounds, actually towards the end, is a couple reasons. Number one is it allows me to use less weight. So I know it sounds ridiculous with a five plate deficit T-bar row. I could realistically probably do eight plates if I was 100% fresh, but I'd rather have a little tax built up, a little fatigue, so that I don't have to go quite as heavy for those movement patterns that are realistically the highest risk profile in terms of I'm doing a lot of loading to a lower back on a movement like that. So I'd rather not have to go as heavy, I already have a really good blood flow, lat activation, so I don't have to go quite as heavy. Number two is that it's so CNS taxing to those heavier movements, I find that if I start with them, first of all, I'm not warmed up, so they don't feel as like nice. Um, but also, I feel taxed for the rest of the workout. Like doing a five plate row with tempo for four sets, it's gonna really rip you in terms of your CNS, your aerobic capacity. So you see me fucking hanging onto the rope right here. Really just got my lungs after that last exercise. So what I wanna do is finish out with a pullover. Lat pullovers are one of my favorite movement patterns for a couple reasons. I know I keep having a couple fucking reasons. Ugh, fucking so many reasons. But reason being is that it's a really good isolated movement. It puts your lats on an island. And also it's not a throwaway exercise. A lot of people like toss and pulled out pullovers at the end of their workout. I was like, oh yeah, saw my fucking FBB buddy doing some fucking pullover or something toss those in at the end of the workout. It's like, no, be deliberate with your pullovers. Really treat them like a working exercise. They're such a good compound movement for lats, for low lats. I'm gonna give you a few cues. So I like to use a longer rope if you guys have this in your gym. One of the biggest things I do is supinate my grip. We talked about it before. If you wanna target lats, palms are usually gonna be facing up towards your supinated position. The other thing I'm gonna do is match the angle of my body with the cable. So instead of being upright, I see a lot of people do pullovers here. You're gonna get a lot of tricep and rear delt activation. What I'm gonna do is match my angle of my upper body and get a huge stretch through the lats. You can see my lats flare out, supinated grip, flare out the lats. I'm gonna dig in, squeeze, I'm gonna release through the lats. Elbow bend, really reach for the, at the end of the rep, really reach for it, stretch out the lats and then dig in, squeeze underneath. What I tell people is like, remember when you're like at a ride at let's say the amusement park or Six Flags and you pull that seatbelt, that kind of thick seatbelt over your lap, like that, that's what you want it to be like. With a supinated grip really controlling it through the lat. So stretch, reach, drive, squeeze. I'm gonna hit eight to 10 with this really controlled tempo. Just driving as much fatigue into those lats as possible. Big stretch, opening them up. Once I get to eight to 10, I'm gonna fire through eight to 10 faster reps. So I'm gonna pre-exhaust with these slower, really milking out these reps. 
So two more, that slow negative. Then we're gonna drive through our failure reps. One more here. Now we're gonna dig through those failure reps. Oh my God, definitely not a throwaway exercise. Use it to its fullest capacity. Really try to isolate through the lats. Three to four sets of this at the end of your training session when you already have a good amount of blood flow will absolutely tear you to shreds in the best way. Very low risk, very high reward profile on this boom pattern specifically. So we have done almost all parts of the back in this workout. I try to hit like kind of rear delts and upper back on another day. So this is more for lats, mid back, lower back to really create that like crazy X frame look. Hope you guys love this workout. You see me just gassed out, giving you guys everything for these videos. So I hope you appreciate that. I'm not just doing these videos and showing you some bullshit I don't actually do. Like everybody here can tell you like, this is how I train. I train with this type of intensity, with these type of negative range of motion. Don't sleep on the style of training. It's gonna take more mental effort. I'll tell you right now, if you think you're gonna go in the gym and train like me day one, and it's gonna be fun, it's not. It's gonna be a completely new way of training for you, focusing on the eccentric, focusing on the range of motion. It's gonna be harder. The sets are gonna take longer. It's gonna be more aerobically taxing, but I guarantee you, it's gonna pay off for a more aesthetic, more healthy of physique with more longevity than if you just train super short range of motion, super heavy. So hope you guys love this workout. I loved it. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification for more amazing content. Without further ado, I'm gonna hit these last three sets. We'll see you on the next training session.